Welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach when working with clients. We know that becoming the healthiest version of yourself goes well beyond just nutrition. We look at sleep, support system, exercise, lifestyle, mindset, and of course, nutrition to help our clients become the healthiest version of themselves. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder, Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Healthy Kids Cookbook, 100% kid-approved recipes the entire family will love. You can find it on Amazon. In this podcast, we will be teaching you how to take one step at a time to become the healthiest version of yourself. Today's guest is Liz. She is one of the Healthy Steps Nutrition Headquarters Nutrition Coaches and also a mentor for us at HSN Mentoring. Today, we talk about three steps to regain control of your nutrition after a weekend of overindulging. One of the most common obstacles we see with clients is that they do really well during the week, but when the routine ends on Friday, so do their healthy habits, which causes them to overindulge on the weekend, then they try to get back on track on Mondays. It's a vicious cycle. In today's episode, we discuss how to overcome this obstacle. With the holidays approaching, these are the perfect tips to help you realign your actions towards your goals. We will get to this episode on regaining control of your nutrition right after this message. Did you know that we had a podcast for gym owners and nutrition coaches looking to coach clients on nutrition and gain more tools in their toolbox? This week on the Grow Your Nutrition Business podcast, we had a master coach from one of our partners at Precision Nutrition. In this week's podcast, Craig and I discuss motivational drivers and dopamine circuits. You might be thinking, what the heck is that? Well, think about what causes you to be motivated to make an action. Craig discusses two specific circuits, the desire circuit and the control circuit. Think of instant gratification or creating an intentional plan to achieve long-term results. This week's episode, we discuss how to realign your actions towards your goals. So make sure you check out episode number 95 on the Grow Your Nutrition Business podcast with Precision Nutrition Coach, Craig Weller. If you are looking for more help and the link to that episode, you can click the link in the show notes. All right, let's get to this episode with Liz on how to regain control after a weekend of overindulging. Enjoy. Liz, welcome to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you today because you have been working with quite a few clients on one specific issue, not issue, but one thing that that comes up often, especially as we're heading into a holiday season. Let's dive right in. Absolutely. One struggle definitely that I hear more often than anything else is weekend eating for sure. Wouldn't you agree with all of your clients? No, it's, it's interesting, right? Like we get in routines during the week and we're really good. We prep on Sunday. We're setting ourselves up for the success, but then Friday afternoon comes around. We're like, oh man, we did so good. We're going to reward ourselves with something. And that turns into Saturday and turns into Sunday. And before you know it between Friday afternoon and Sunday evening, like it's like 30% of the week. Absolutely. And and it's not so much, you know, say Friday night, you go out and have, you know, a couple drinks and maybe some pizza. If you were to leave it at that, that wouldn't be a problem. But when you get that cycle that ends in, well, you know, screw it. I already messed up. I'm going to restart on Monday and then repeat that. You can actually stall all of your progress by just those three days of eating. And the thing is, is like mentally you're doing so well during the week. And then it's like you downplay the 
the situation on the weekend. And then all of a sudden the plan doesn't work. Your, your die doesn't work and you go right back into old habits, which is why we talk so much about creating a healthy lifestyle, which no matter what situation you're in, you're going to be able to, you know, make educated decisions, do the best that you can, and then move on from it. Like enjoy a treat and then move on. Right. Exactly. And I think that's the biggest thing that surprises, you know, my clients that I talk to about this, of, of our approach of how we work through it. And it's, it's to develop that lifelong healthy lifestyle and healthy relationship with food is what's going to get you long-term sustainable results. Absolutely. You know, you don't want to feel like you're depriving yourself on the weekend or like we just went to St. Pete for the weekend with another family and we could have eaten out every single week, but there is a kitchen where we stayed and Jason prepped some food and we had some vegetables and we had balanced meals. And did we go get ice cream one day? Absolutely. We all ate ice cream and it was delicious. Did I have a couple alcoholic beverages? Absolutely. But I had some vegetables. We had balanced meals and got right back on track on, on Monday. So, you know, the goal of this is to really talk about three steps to assess where we're at on our weekend adventure and create habits to make more of a lifestyle change where you're not feeling so restricted. Exactly. And, and still be able to enjoy your weekends and not constantly be saying no, you know, when uh, situations arise and you're not constantly saying, no, I can't have that, you know, find ways to incorporate it in a healthy manner. Absolutely. Especially with the holidays coming up, right? Like you want to be able to feel like satisfied with what you're doing and not feel like you have to say no to do certain things, which I've seen people before say no to holiday trips or uh, not even holiday trips, but like holiday parties or bringing food scales to places because they feel like they have to be exactly on track. And that is the last thing from creating a healthy relationship with food and a healthy lifestyle. So let's let's dive into the three steps that you walk through with your clients to help create that healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. So bonus step that you and Amanda already talked about on your podcast about holiday eating is the biggest thing is to give yourself that grace. So listen to that podcast for, for, to dive in deeper to that. So just being patient with yourself through this process of kind of working through ways to improve your overall relationship with food, because it takes a little bit of time. Love that. Love that. So that's step one, go back and listen to this podcast. Now, what are you actually doing with your clients? So the very first thing, you know, talking to clients on Monday morning, you know, tell me what's the best thing that happened to you this weekend. People want to dive in and be like, you know what? Friday night, I had four beers. I ordered a pizza and I ate the entire thing. And then I woke up on Saturday and did the same thing, blah, 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 blah. Talking about everything that they ate that was, you know, quote unquote bad over the weekend. It's like hard pause there. I would rather talk about the other, you know, 18, 19, 20 meals you ate throughout the week and take a look at those to see if it's affecting how your weekend eating goes which doesn't really make sense when you first bring it up to someone. If they tell you the struggle is what you're eating on the weekend, I don't care what you're eating on the weekend. I care more how you're eating during the week. And you can definitely see some trends. People who give you that feeling of out of control or once I start eating a bag of potato chips or you know the chips and salsa at a restaurant, I can't stop. That feeling of being out of control generally comes from what I've seen too much restriction during the week. That makes complete sense to me because you feel like you're going at a hundred miles per hour and then you want to just let it rip as one of my clients told me at one point (laughs) on the weekends. So like I, I need to reward myself because I've been so strict during the week. Exactly. So it's like, let's take a, a, a closer look at how you're eating during the week. Are you, you know, following this meal plan that's, you know, oatmeal for breakfast, a salad with a protein for lunch, and chicken, broccoli, and rice for dinner every night? And are you constantly saying no to maybe opportunities to eat outside of that strict meal plan throughout the week? You know, say someone, you know, Barb from the office brings in these awesome homemade cookies and you just go, no, I can't. I'm eating this certain way. And you're constantly saying no. You can only hold that grip on your cravings for so long it's eventually going to wear out. I don't care who you are or what kind of willpower you have. Absolutely. So 
how could, and you know, what's interesting. We've interviewed quite a few people who've lost over a hundred pounds recently. Like it, podcasts have, have come out or they're coming out and everyone kind of says the same thing. Like, Hey, I follow the plate method. I just make sure I have vegetables on my plate and I have some protein. And then if I have whatever I want for a starch or I have a little bit of a treat, okay, fine. But the foundation is the plate method. And it's so simple that no matter what situation they're in, if Barb brings in lunch from the office or there's a cookie or whatever the case may be, like they've started with the solid foundation and then they can have a treat and move on. Right. And you can just incorporate it in a way, you know, the key thing is eating foods that make you feel good, not only physically, but mentally. So in a way that's not going to trigger this guilt cycle. So if during the week you're eating kind of the same thing every day and nothing that really is hyper palatable or tastes, you know, super yummy that makes you want to eat more or really enjoy the process of eating. Yes. You're eventually going to be bored and want to eat something a little bit more, you know, palatable to, to all of your senses. I love that. And I think it's important for people to realize like what you eat does affect your energy levels and your mood and how you sleep. And when you do start thinking about all of that, it allows you to say like, okay, is this, is this decision in the moment helping me or hurting me towards my long-term goals? And then it, it gives you a different perspective, right? I remember, you know, it's no um, secret that Jason, my husband has a large sweet tooth. And until we did the continuous glucose monitoring experiment and he saw how the sugar that he ate at night affected his sleep, he was like, okay, this is not worth it anymore. And once he was able to connect those dots, it was so much easier for him. So I challenge the listeners on this podcast to really think about what you're eating and how is it affecting the other things like your mood, energy levels, sleep. And maybe that perspective will give you another insight of like, is this, is this worth it for me to overindulge or not? Right. And that it takes you out of that moment of, you know, a rash decision or eating out of impulse. And it, it forces you to be mindful, not only in, in the moment of eating, but thinking about how am I going to feel later tonight? How am I going to feel tomorrow? Um, and that's, you know, ultimate mindfulness around eating is thinking about before, during, and after. I love that. And you work with so many clients on the mindfulness piece. Like that's really your specialty. Which it is, is. It's my favorite which is so ironic because your history with food is, is different, which is, which is awesome. And I think that allows you to come from experience of like, Hey, I know what mindful eating is not like, and I know what it is like now. And it's going to help you enjoy the whole, the whole process so much better. Absolutely. And just to give a really good example of this, I, you know, almost every one of my clients, I work through this improving and, you know, really fostering a healthy relationship with food in some capacity. And I had this one client last year who, you know, had a significant amount of weight to lose, but was constantly coming back to me with her struggle as I lose control. I'm really good when I'm planning and I prep my food and I do this, but the second I start eating something off plan, I, I don't have any control. And the first question I said was, what, what type of food are you losing control with? What, you know? Is it sweet? Is it salty? And she said it's, you know, she really likes salty cracker type snacks like Cheez-Its and goldfish. I'm like, okay, here's the plan. And this is going to sound weird. So you have to trust me on this. I want you every single day for the next two weeks to incorporate the Cheez-Its or the goldfish as your carb source for your lunches. So it is a pl planned, mindful way that you are going to now regain your control over this food and kind of almost neutralize it. You know, these foods that we feel out of control with, we're holding them up on a pedestal. We talk about them differently than we would talk about the grilled chicken. No one ever binges on grilled chicken because it's a normal accepted part of our, our daily diet. So let's neutralize the foods that we feel as though we don't have control over eating and make them a normal part of our diet. So for two weeks, she ate her serving, you know, measured out serving of Cheez-Its for lunch. Okay. And I'm, she's like, I'm intrigued is, now. What happens next? <laughs> yeah, this is wild, right? Um, after two weeks of it, she, on our next check-in meeting, she goes, can I take a break from the Cheez-Its because I'm kind of sick of them. <laughs> and she, she actually never, and I, I just followed up with her a couple weeks ago. It's been eight months and she has not binged on a salty food snack since. And as soon as she gets that feeling like, oh, I really want this, 
she found a way to incorporate it into her daily meal plan in a balanced and thoughtful manner. So instead of like constantly white knuckling your way through the craving, like I want this, I want this, I want this, and it's going to persist the more you resist it, yep. you make a plan for it. Huh. That's a good idea. Okay. All right. I like yeah. it. I like it. Okay. That makes sense. So tip number one, let's like assess, right? Let's look at our 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 plan during the week. Are we being too restrictive, which is causing us to go crazy on the weekend? Let's talk about tip number two. Tip number two, and you kind of already alluded to this when you got into, you know, asking yourself if it's worth it, thinking about how you're going to feel before, during, after. Um, You know, I ask myself three questions anytime I eat something that's maybe not part of my normal plan. First question is, am I hungry? And if the answer is no, it's a hard stop, you know, because obviously then you're bringing in maybe some sort of like emotional reasons for eating, but I feel like that's a whole different podcast to go and dive into that. So are you hungry? If the answer is no, hard stop. Go find something else to do. The second question is, does this food choice align with my current goals? And your goals are fluid, you know, and you talked with Amanda about how maybe during the holidays, you're shifting your goals to be a little bit more towards maintenance. Maybe you're more on a muscle gain goal. So does it align with my current goals? If the answer is yes, have at it, eat away. If the answer is no, you're going to move on to the third question. And that's, is it worth it? You know, is it worth it thinking about how I'm going to feel tomorrow? Is it worth it in the sense of, is it my favorite thing? You know, so many people are saying like, I have such a sweet tooth and they're just going to go eat, you know, a bag of stale Chips Ahoy cookies. Like, Why eat that when you can go and get like your favorite cookie from your favorite bakery and sit down and really enjoy it? So make it, make sure it's your favorite. Have some standards for yourself when you're eating these, you know, more calorie dense, hyper palatable foods. I love that. I think that those are some really important questions. So are we hungry? Does this food choice align with my goals? And is it worth it? Yes. Okay, great. Absolutely. Have at it. And maybe it's worth it to have a couple bites, but not, you know, a whole pie, right? Like let's, let's be mindful. So I think those are some super, super helpful things. I assume you've worked through these questions with clients before. Can you give me an example of how this has helped your clients be able to kind of reassess and, and figure out, okay, is this, is this worth it or not? Yeah, definitely. So I have an, another client who I'm currently still working with who self-proclaimed, you know, hugest sweet tooth feels totally out of control of, around any kind of sugar, constantly craving sugar. And she, you know, fell victim to the constant treats that people were bringing into the office. So always having, you know, goodies sitting out on the lunch table, leftover Halloween candy, all of that stuff. So instead of just saying, don't, eat it, we set up a plan for her going through these steps of questions. And if it came to, is it worth it? And is it your favorite? And it wasn't her favorite. If someone brought in like just, you know, a bunch of leftover candy and she's not like really into it. It's like, okay, you can tell yourself, I really would like to have a sweet today, but I am going to go to my favorite bakery to get that sweet and satisfy that sweet craving. So It helps in two ways. Number one, forces you to be mindful about what you're putting into your body. And number two, it's making it a little bit more difficult to get it. It's not saying, no, you can't have it, but it's saying, yes, if you want it, you have to get in your car. You have to go drive to your bakery and then pick out your favorite treat. By the end, the cravings probably passed, but she ended up only doing that maybe twice in like two months. But telling herself, you can still have this, but under these, you know, guidelines, was very, you know, freeing for her to feel like she had some control over that craving. I mean, practically speaking, people that are in an office, I remember, you know, working at the hospital, which is so ironic at the hospital, people would bring in donuts because, you know, they're trying to be nice and to the nurses and cookies and like all the junk in the hospital and in the nurse's station. And you would walk by it and like mindlessly grabbing it because it was right in front of you. And it felt like it was calling your name. I mean, even the Halloween candy, right? Like it's sitting out on the counter and I'm working from home and I'm walking by it, 
you better believe that I'm going to grab a piece or two just because it's right in front there. of me. It's like I'm setting myself up for failure. Let's put it in a cabinet where I can't see it all the time and then it's not even tempting me. Uh, but the right. truth is when you're when you're in a workplace where you can't control the environment of what is being brought in, I think having those boundaries for yourself is only going to help you set yourself up for success for sure. Right. And if you're following them, it tastes better. You know, no one, no one says that really viewing food as fuel means that we still can't get enjoyment over what we're eating and really enjoy like more decadent flavors and, and that sort of thing. Um, really neat story about this real quick. I had the opportunity two years ago to go on this like health and wellness retreat in Mexico with a bunch of like professional CrossFit athletes. So it was neat to spend a week with them for every meal. And I I just watched their habits to see, you know, what are, what are these high level athletes doing day to day? And Sam Dancer was there. And I noticed that every time we went out to dinner, he ordered dessert first and he would sit as everyone else was waiting for their meals and eat his dessert. And I finally, I'm like, I have to ask you about this. Why are you doing that? And he said, dessert is my favorite meal. It's my favorite part of the meal. I want to make sure I'm hungry and I enjoy it. So he would order when he wanted it. He would get the dessert first, enjoy every bite, and then wouldn't have to ever feel like he was restricting himself or maybe overindulging and being too full. It's like, if you really want it, eat it first. Hmm. And around your workout time. When you're <laughs> yeah. needing to replace your glycogen stores. <laughs> yes. I've actually done that with, with Reese's peanut butter cups and a client before. It's like, here, you want a pre-workout? You can't stop eating these? Eat these. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So tip number two, you know, really figuring out, is this worth it? Is this aligning with my goals? Um, yes. And in helping clients navigate that, maybe making it a little bit more challenging to, uh, you know, not challenging, but a few more steps that they have to forcefully be mindful when eating these, these decadent treats. Okay. What's tip number three? So tip number three is what happens when we've already looked at your week of eating and we've optimized that. And, you know, you've already established some mindfulness. It's a little, a very loose guideline to help you anytime you don't have control over your meal plan. And it's the never miss twice rule. And this just means if say yesterday morning, I went out for a big indulgent brunch. It was amazing. There was mimosas involved. My next meal was my balanced, normal, follow the plate method, veggies, protein, carbs, all of that. So if you're going to have a more caloric dense, you know, maybe hyper palatable meal, make sure the next one follows up with a normal, balanced, you know, more mindful meal. So never miss twice. And this will stop, number one, the guilt feelings, because it's a planned thing in your mind. Like, yes, I know Saturday night I'm going out to dinner with friends and I want to eat all the tacos. Okay, great. Your breakfast and your lunch and your breakfast the next morning are going to be more balanced. I love that. I think that's a fantastic, actionable step going into the holiday season uh, with something like no matter what situation you're in, no matter where you are at, that is one simple step so that you don't feel deprived, that you can enjoy the treat that you want, but you also get back on track really fast. Because the the problem is, and so many times, and Amanda and I actually talked about this on the podcast, people will like stop their nutrition plan or stop their coaching around the holidays because they're like, it's the, it's the toughest time I'm going to fall off. And, and they like set themselves up for failure when in reality, Hey, you actually need a coach to keep you accountable during this time to not make two, you know, meals like that in a row, like to help you get back on track so that you can see the results that you're looking for according to the goals that you set at the time. Right. And, and the biggest thing is with, you know, holiday eating, vacation eating, weekend eating, people feel as though they fail when they lose that control. So the ultimate goal is to give, you know, our clients the tools to regain their control over food. And that is the perfect way to end this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Liz, thank you so much for all you do. I know this is such a passion of yours to help people be more mindful and take the guilt away from eating and really establish that healthy, positive relationship with food. And you, you do so well with clients in this specific aspect. So thank you for all of your hard work and, and continuing to support all of the healthy steps, nutrition clients in mindfulness and, and helping them establish that healthy relationship with food. Thank you so much. It is definitely my favorite thing to talk about. So I really appreciate this time. 
hope you enjoyed that episode with Liz on regaining control after a weekend. There is such a negative connotation around food and cheat meals. I get asked questions every single week about cheat meals and treats and what people should do specifically around the holidays. Well, I can tell you around the holidays, I might not be as strict with my nutrition, but I always go back to the foundation. I love Liz's tip about never do something twice. So if you have a meal that's not exactly the most balanced, get back on track the next meal. I'll give you an example. Well, Thanksgiving, we always go back to my family's hometown in Daytona Beach, and we always go to my favorite pizza restaurant, Panheads. I absolutely love it. I helped them open up that restaurant years ago between college and getting a quote unquote real job. Well, we go back and of course I'm going to have some pizza, but guess what? We'll have a big salad first. The next meal is going to be some balanced vegetables, protein, and a little bit of starch. Me and my husband will often drop into a CrossFit gym or we'll go around, go around our neighborhood for a run to just stay active during this time. When we go to my family's Thanksgiving, I still try to focus on the plate method. If we think about Thanksgiving meals, there is always some green bean casserole. You might have mashed cauliflower or a little bit of mashed potatoes, stuffing, and of course some turkey. Try to keep the plate method. Half of our plate vegetables, quarter protein, quarter starch. Remember that holiday plates tend to be way bigger than your normal size plates. So I would encourage you to get those normal size plates instead of the holiday plates where you overfill your plate with an even bigger plate than normal. I hope you use these tips this holiday season. If you are looking to make health a way of life, you have to keep it simple. You need to feel like you're not missing out with your routine and your habits, which is why you want to do these simple strategies that were talked about during this episode today. I challenge you to rethink your priorities this holiday season and keep it simple. Use the tips that Liz talked about. Be intentional with your decisions and don't forget something as simple as the plate method. To get an idea of what a Thanksgiving plate might look like with our favorite Thanksgiving dishes, click the link in the show notes and you can see a great visual on the blog connected to this podcast episode. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful holiday season. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review for this podcast. By spending one minute to write a review, more people will find this podcast and get this additional free help. If you are looking for a nutrition coach and looking for some individualized support, you can go to hireanutritioncoach.com and find a healthy steps nutrition coach near you or click the link in the show notes and apply for nutrition coaching at our healthy steps nutrition headquarters location. We'll see you back here next week.